In this module, we'll be looking more closely at the sources and magnitude of forces which cause vibration problems and see how pulsations are generated within the system. Now let's look at the reciprocating compressor in more detail and identify the key forces acting on pipes, vessels, and foundation. Pressure pulsations. Pulsations are created as gas enters or leaves a cylinder in short bursts. Pressure pulsations travel through the piping and vessels. Pressure can create very high unbalanced forces between 10 and 10,000 pounds peak to peak. Mass unbalance. Because it is virtually impossible to create a system where the mass of all the different components are perfectly balanced or distributed, these imbalances translate to vibrational forces when the system is set in motion. Moment or couple is referred to as the magnitude of force applied to a rotational system at a distance from the axis of rotation. In a reciprocating system, this couple is generated between throws around the vertical axis of the compressor. Cylinder assembly stretching force results from force transferred to the cylinder by the pressure generated by compression resulting from the motion of the piston. This is also referred to as cylinder stretch or gas forces. Crosshead forces. As the rotating motion of the crankshaft gets converted into the reciprocating motion of the piston, a residual vertical force is created at the crosshead. Misalignment generates an unwanted radial and or axial force on the compressor and engine, a force which is magnified at higher speeds. Now that we've defined the six types of forces, we can look at their total impact on a compressor package. This chart shows the magnitude of the force at the fundamental frequency or one times run speed. There are also forces at higher multiples of run speed, such as two times, three times, and so on. These higher order forces are also called harmonics. Pulsation forces and cylinder stretching forces are examples of forces that occur throughout every multiple of run speed. So you can see that forces on the compressor occur across a wide range of frequencies. These dynamic forces generate vibration as defined in the vibration equation. Vibration, equals dynamic forces multiplied by dynamic flexibility. Pulsations are pressure waves created during the reciprocating motion of a compressor piston. Here's a simple example. As a piston moves forward, it pushes the gas or fluid ahead of it, which increases the pressure at the face of the piston. This creates a high pressure area that propagates at the speed of sound throughout the system. This animation illustrates the formation of pulsations. Like a ripple in a pond, the waves continue to travel away from the source, except with pulsations, they travel at the speed of sound in the fluid. As the piston returns, an area of low pressure forms behind the piston. This low pressure also travels away from the piston at the speed of sound. Pulsations exist in the suction and the discharge systems. They travel through the bottles, the piping, off to the cooler, and then through the off-skid piping. Each wave can be greatly amplified due to a phenomenon called acoustical resonance. Here's a very simplified example of acoustic resonance. Let's follow the progress of a pulsation wave as it travels along a pipe and through an open leg or vessel. The yellow wave indicates moderate pressure amplitude. The wave is traveling at the speed of sound. As the wave enters the opening, a small wave is reflected backwards. Green indicates a very low amplitude wave. Note the original wave gets a bit smaller. Now the wave exits the chamber or opening. Due to the change in area, a small wave reflects off the edge 
and travels backwards as shown in green. The original wave is further reduced as it continues through the pipe. Note there is still a remnant of the initial wave reflecting in the space. The next wave enters and the process repeats, including the small reflected waves. Depending on the geometry, frequency, and other factors in the system, the two other waves may be in phase. If the waves are aligned, then the amplitudes will add. The process repeats with each stroke of the compressor. Now the reflecting waves are in phase with the main wave, and the maximum has been reached. This is called acoustical resonance, because the reflections are in phase with the primary pulse. The pressure wave can be amplified significantly, even up to 50 times higher than the original wave. If this acoustical resonance happens, then violent shaking and pipe failure are likely to occur. Now that we understand how pulsations are created and amplified, let's look at how they create shaking forces in the piping system. For this example, the average pressure is 1,000 psi. The amplitude of these pressure pulsations can vary widely. Let's assume no pulsation control exists and the pulsation levels can reach a relatively low amplitude of 6% peak to peak. The maximum is 1,030 psi and the minimum is 970. The differential pressure equals 60 psi between maximum and minimum amplitudes. As the wave travels through the pipe system, an unbalanced force is created at T's, elbows, and locations where the pipe changes size. The force equals pressure times area. Using the same pressure pulsation, the differential pressure is 60 psi. The maximum force will occur when the maximum pressure occurs at one end and a minimum pressure occurs at the other end. The area the differential pressure acts against is the projected area of the pipe on the elbow. For this six inch pipe, the area is about 28 square inches. As the pressure wave travels 180 degrees, the differential pressure reverses direction and is now minus 60 psi. The unbalanced force is now 1,680 pounds in the reverse direction. The force oscillates back and forth at the run speed. For a 1200 RPM machine, the frequency is 20 times per second. This means the unbalanced force of over 1600 pounds is shaking back and forth at 20 times a second. This puts extreme stress on clamps, bolts, and sleepers, trying to hold the pipe in place. Forces from pulsations can range from less than 10 pounds to over 10,000 pounds. Here is an example to illustrate pressure pulsations in an interstage system, from discharge through the cooler and back to suction for the next stage. The pulsations are indicated by color pressure points. Yellow represents positive pressures, and 180 degrees later the pressure is reversed as shown in blue. These pressure pulsations are occurring at many times per second. Plane wave theory is used to predict these pressure standing waves. Using our unique software tools, we can assess the pulsations throughout the package and for every different operating condition. Knowing the geometries, we can convert the dynamic pressure changes to unbalanced forces. The red vectors are forces and the arrows indicate the direction of force. The length of the vector represents the magnitude of force at the specific location. You can see that in some areas these forces are excessive and must be controlled. We then evaluate the system and offer recommendations to ensure these unbalanced pulsation forces are controlled and under guideline. For modeling pulsations, we recommend using time domain analysis. This type of algorithm is more accurate than the older approach that uses frequency domain analysis. Beta pioneered time domain analysis in the 1990s and employs this technique on all pulsation studies. 
This chart shows the frequencies where the pulsation forces exceed guideline. Notice that the frequency domain model predicts high unbalanced forces at 160 Hz. Using this approach would likely result in higher cost pulsation bottles. When using the more accurate time domain approach, notice the prediction is much lower and in this case it is close to the guideline. The improved accuracy of time domain offers advantages such as more cost-effective pulsation bottles, a significant savings which can be more than the cost of the study. This proprietary software tool is more accurate at high frequencies. While time domain is widely accepted, it should be noted that many firms do not have this capability. A few moments ago, we looked at pulsation forces at one operating condition. However, most compressors operate at many different conditions based on different operating pressures, flow rates, and loading configurations. Pulsation forces will be different at each condition. This chart illustrates the importance of analyzing all operating conditions. This compressor has 31 different conditions. At one times run speed, there are many conditions where the forces exceed guideline. We also have to catch problems at higher frequencies. In this case, we see some conditions where forces exceed guideline at four times and five times run speed. Understanding and addressing problems at specific run speeds will avoid failures or operating problems. Beta and other leading machinery consultants strongly recommend evaluating all operating conditions. Shortcuts that examine only a few cases will often produce disastrous results. For variable speed drive and many engine applications, the analysis should evaluate the system under the entire speed range. For fixed speed motors, it is important to look at plus or minus 10% around the planned speed. Let's summarize this module. There are many forces generated by a reciprocating compressor package. This module describes how pressure pulsations are created during each cycle of a piston. Key points are, pulsations are pressure waves that travel through the system. At resonant conditions, pulsations are added together to create very high pressure fluctuations. Unless controlled, pulsations create damaging forces on the piping system. The unbalanced force equals pressure times area. Unbalanced forces must be identified throughout the package, including off-skid piping. Beta's role is to design a pulsation control solution that reduces pulsations to acceptable levels on new systems or revamps. When doing a pulsation study, it is important to check all operating conditions for pulsations, including the adequate speed range for fixed and variable speed applications. Time domain modeling techniques should be used for improved accuracy over the older frequency domain approaches. The remaining forces on a reciprocating compressor cannot be eliminated. They are inherent in the reciprocating motion, so the design must accommodate the forces without failure. This is part of the mechanical design undertaken by Beta and discussed in later modules.